Hello dear friends. In this video, we will discuss how to schedule tasks for a single execution in future using the Threads API. As discussed previously, there are two overloaded methods named schedule in the timer class that can be used for this purpose. Both take a timer task as the first parameter. The second parameter is date in one and long in the other. Both represent the time that we want to schedule the task for. Let's do some coding. The class scheduling tasks for one time execution that is visible on the screen will be our main class here. We also need a timer task that can be scheduled and executed using the timer class. So let us create that task first. We are going to use the value returning task A as the template for our new task. We will name the new task as scheduled task A. Let us make it extend the timer task class and remove the irrelevant bits first. In order to understand the scheduling functionality better, we need to see the time when the task is scheduled for execution and the actual time when it executes. So we need to print a couple of timestamps here. Let's do that. I'm going to use a date formatter object to print the dates properly here.
Here I have used a simple date format object to format the timestamps properly before printing. As discussed in the previous video, we can retrieve the scheduled execution time of a task by using the method scheduled execution time of the timer task class. We are printing the actual as well as the scheduled execution time of the task here to try to understand the time implications when we schedule tasks for execution using the timer class. Our task definition is complete. Let us shift our focus to the main class now. Now we can schedule tasks with the timer object by providing either the exact time of the execution or the offset in milliseconds from the current time. We will see both the usages in action here. While writing this class, we will have to do some minor time related computations for which I have a utility class already coded, time, time utils. It has a single public static method named get future time that takes a date and a long parameter. The millis to add parameter represents the number of milliseconds to add to the timestamp represented by the initial time object. It returns a date arrived at after adding millis to add milliseconds to the timestamp represented by the initial time object and uses the calendar class for this simple calculation. Now in the main class we are going to schedule four tasks and see them executing in the timer execution thread. Let us schedule the first task to run at a specific time. Here, firstly we have created a timer object by using its two arguments constructor. The first argument is a string representing the name of the execution thread and the second argument is boolean representing whether we want the execution thread to run in a daemon mode or not. We have elected to run it in a daemon mode of course. Secondly, we have calculated the exact time that comes 5 seconds after the current time and schedule the first task to run at that exact time. Now let us schedule the second task by specifying a delay of 10 seconds rather than the exact time. And let us also add a visual separator between the tasks here.
let us schedule the third task with an initial delay of 12 seconds now. Lastly, let us schedule a fourth task at a specific time. Notice that we have passed the sleep time argument as 0 for all the 4 tasks as we want to emulate very short lived tasks here. Secondly, also notice that for the first task we have just printed the scheduled specified time as the time that we have calculated ourselves. While for the fourth task we are retrieving the scheduled time from the task itself after scheduling it first. Both ways are ok when you schedule a task at a specific time. You are going to get the same result with both. However, when you are scheduling the task by specifying an initial delay, it is better to retrieve the actual scheduled time by querying the task itself as there is a small chance of a few milliseconds mismatch between your calculated value and the actual time that the timer has scheduled the task for. That is why for the second and third tasks we have retrieved the scheduled time by querying the task itself.